have Noel Deritu, who's a musician. He sings, he plays. Yani, you're, you're with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Mohamed Katachand. And you may not, you may not find him too foreign, in terms of uh, unfamiliar, rather. But this is Moha Graphics. You know, when you talk about Moha Graphics, you see it on the matatus, on vehicles. This is the guy. This is the guy. And he'll be telling us why his teeth are shining that much. <laughs> and we have uh, Nadia Olwoch, who's, a, who's a, an artist in terms of visual art. And she's going to be painting or drawing. Which is which? Drawing. Drawing. She's going to be drawing me, I think. Yeah. By the end of the show, we'll have a picture of me. Oh, Noel, what's it be to you? Do you, oh. you, want it, you want a photo of yourself? Yeah. Well. With your guitar. I'm ready. And Noel, uh, Lois, don't think you're the only one with a musician in studio. We also have, we have our own guitar. We could even do a battle of the guitarists. <laughs> <laughs> and Nairobi hopefully will win. But that's, these are the people we're having a discussion with in our, in our Nairobi studios when we talk about the creative industry. Begin with you, Noel. How long have you been an artist? Uh, professionally, it's been five years. Started 2013. Well, I started music a bit earlier. But I think 2012, 2013 is when I decided I want to do this like full time. Yeah. What pushed you to go to that edge in terms of, you know, it's, a, it's an unconventional kind of career. Right, right, right. What did you study? I studied a Bachelor of Commerce Marketing. So you just market your music, so, so at least it'll help you. Well, it's, it's helping. <laughs> but uh, obviously, you know, uh, in African culture, arts are kind of um, looked down upon. So even when I, when I was saying I want to be a musician, to be fair, my parents had never heard me sing or play, so it sounded like a dream. <laughs> Um, but they were like, what's your plan? Were you, were you singing, even those guys who sing in the bathroom, you're singing in harsh tones, no one is hearing you? Nothing. I didn't even know I could sing at, at that point. I started off with guitar. So when I started getting better is when I was like, mm, maybe I could do something with it. But it was still like a far-fetched dream. So that's why they asked me to go to uni. So I figured I'd do something that would be practical, you know, across the board. And, and marketing was it. And I loved marketing. I didn't want to do anything that... I would regret doing taking six years, and I won't. <laughs> I won't really use. Why are you it. talking about doctors like that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't regret. But yeah, but that's kind of my educational background. So music was purely passion, um, because it didn't make sense financially. It didn't make sense in very many conventional aspects. But um, I think it's the passion just drove me. Actually, after uni, I tried getting jobs, but. 95 was not cutting it for me. Really? Yeah. Is it that you got one and it still didn't work for you, or you got you did not get one, so you decided, let me just go all out with my passion? To be honest, I didn't even seek out for a job after, after graduation, because I, I did the internship you have to do before you graduate, and that cemented my decision. OK, we'll get back to you. Moha, <laughs> we have seen your stickers <coughs> and your work of art on the, on, you know, on the streets, on the roads, for many years. How long have you been in the in the in this business? Okay, I've been in this business like almost twenty years. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't have a garage at that point, but I used to go to different garages doing my art. <clears throat> but in two thousand and four, that's when I just put up my garage. That's that's when I started officially. But I've been here maybe since nineteen ninety nine. That's more than twenty one years. Yeah. You, you, how long had you been drawing before that, be, being okay, an artist? I, okay, I'm an artist. I was, from school I was an artist. I used to go to this science congress, uh, my portraits and all that. After that, I was employed after school, and uh, it didn't give me that pleasure. I never used to sell. I used to be employed like a salesman. I don't know how to sell. What were you selling? I used to work for a, a company called uh, Salias. I used to sell paints and all this, but it was very hard. You'd rather, you'd, rather, you, you, you'd rather use the paint to, to work because than to my, my boss used, usually called me to the office and I need a diary. Yangu. When I give him my diary, it's like full of drawings, portraits of him, my <laughs> other workers. It's like, you do this, this is what you should do. Then after that, he just gave me my salary. It was on April, I think, at the middle of the month. I can party, I can be you go look for what you want. I'll still be here. Kitu Kikata, you, you come back. That's a good boss. He was the best boss I've ever had. So after that, I went to this garage called Catskill. The next day, I just went there outside the gate. Then I met a friend of mine who I used to be in, uh, going with his matatu. He's like, Moa, what are you doing here? And he said, ah, I'm squeezy. I can be, ah, I'm a chora, but I'm a matriangle. I never knew how to do it on a matatu. I used to do it on paper and all that. But my passion was 
to do something which everyone would see. Because my mother was an artist, she used to do paintings, take them to galleries, it takes time before it's sold. But for me, I, I wanted to do the same thing. But mine, I wanted to, something to go around, s people to see. So I thought matatu and cars or anything moving was the best option for me. Because for me, doing something and people appreciate gives me so much satisfaction. Okay. Yeah. And how many people have you employed now? At the moment, I have like 20, 20 25 people, and I have students who I, I, train. I train. I train them to use airbrush to do portraits. That's the main thing. Portraits, graffiti, all kind of uh, art. Like I, I, what I'm specialized in, airbrush, doing portraits, graffiti, sticker work, pattern on cars. Let's say you can say it's like everything, because even I do fiber work which I mold the bumpers for small cars and all that, doing customization of bumpers. So I have different stages of things. I, have, I teach guys fiber work, uh, portraits, graffiti, because I have different students who like different things. So I try and push them on the side they are good at, and I try and nurture whatever they know. OK. Mm. Nadia, to you, what, what's your story as an artist? I've always loved drawing. And I was obsessed with uh, Disney cartoons. <coughs> so I used to watch The Little Mermaid over and over and over again on that VHS that we used to have in the house. And I started tracing like the sleeves. And then I remember one day I was watching and I was convinced that the people lived in the TV. <laughs> and then one day, I think my mom and dad, they told me, people make those things. I'm like, are you serious? I have to, I have to be a part of this. So that sparked the obsession. And they've supported me since the beginning, every single, uh, art, art tuition, like art camp, I was taken for it. And now I'm lucky to say that I'm an animator for my career. So that's what you do full time? Yeah, that's what I do full time. And do you feel that there's still, there's a, there's, a, there's a void in terms of there's not enough people doing this who would actually be willing to? Or do you feel you guys are enough? We're not enough. And I think that the beauty of animation is that it is a fine art, but it's also an industrial practice. So you need lots of labor, you need lots of hands. And in order to do it well, you also need lots of training. So that's a gap that I think there is in Kenya. But I think that gap is being bridged. There are training facilities that are opening um, around um, that will give the people that will give um, aspiring animators the time you need to be able to perfect your skill. Because people think that a cartoon is because it looks simple or because it's so clear that it takes a very short time. But the truth is that it's a distillation process. So in order for me to give you like Mickey Mouse, um, you have to understand who is he, how do you want your audience to feel when you look at him, um, how does he move, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of rigor. And I think we're yet to get to that point where um, people are given the, the training that will allow them to express themselves in full. But I think it's on its way. Okay, good stuff. And you've mentioned about uh, skill and training. He's mentioned how Moha has talked about how he trains people, um, you know, for that skill. Musicians, now this is a challenge. <laughs> Many times we have with, with, with musicians, for instance, we have guys who, oh, you can't sing. And the next thing you've got the man, you go to a studio and you hit the studio and start recording. Right. Not as many people go through some kind of training to hone their skill. The most training they'll do is when you're practicing that song you want to perform or you want to record. Mm -hmm. What kind, of, what kind of training have you undergone, if any, in regards of honing your skill, both as a singer and as an instrumentalist? Right. Um, uh, a, a lot, actually. It's funny you mentioned that. I think when someone would see me here today play, they just figure we woke up like this, you know? <laughs> woke up Instagram like this. people. But it's like, you know, it's, it's 10 years worth of work. So in terms of training, I, I took informal and formal training. Um, started off obviously like every on YouTube University uh, trying to figure out chords and vocal techniques but at some point I hit a ceiling and I wasn't I wasn't growing because I didn't understand fundamentals of some of the things I mean YouTube is such a short snippet you can't really learn a lot of the fundamentals so I did lessons at the conservatoire here uh, for guitar uh, for voice, I mean, I've sung in church all my life, so I think church is like a university for singers. <laughs> That's low-key, <laughs> underrated. Um, but constant performance. I, I think even before I started gigging, before I was like a professional, I would practice like six hours a day. Um, it was like a full-time job. Skills, 
both on vocal and on instruments. Um, and now it set me up for, because now I can, you can call me up for a gig tomorrow and I'd be ready. I wouldn't be like, give me a week to practice. But that's, I, I think artists don't see that. They don't see like it's taken me 10 years to, to, to do that. Guys just want now, I want what he wants now. And it's, it's a lot of work, unfortunately. Not unfortunately, it's, it's just how it is, yeah. <coughs> Mohai, for you, it was, you said you, you, you'd always been an artist through and through. And now you're even training people. Do we have enough <coughs> um, facilities to train guys to do what you do? Okay, at the moment, for what I do, it's very simple. You just need a compressor and your cre creative mind. And after that, you have to know what you want. Because like for me, before I learned everything, because doing art on something, on somebody's property like a matatu or a small car is something very very fragile because you may spoil it it's not like a painting you can paint then tear off the paper but for me the, i took many years to master my skills and to master what what i wanted so for me now teaching guys it's very easy because whatever you need you just need an airbrush you have to be very creative and you have to have the time because things don't come that easy. For me, it took me almost like 15 years to make mistakes, to be what I am now. Because whatever I do now, it's like, I want to do something, I just go. My customers, they come, they tell me, what are we going to do? The, the only thing I ask them, we, we just sit down, discuss, discuss on the theme, color, and maybe the pictures we want. After that, the design and the preparation and the setup is all in my mind. I just go there, boom, do it. And that's what I'm training my guys. I'm training them to be confident with what they know and practice so much because you don't have time to waste. It's like uh, this guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger, said, you have 24 hours in a day. You sleep like six hours. The rest of the time is learning and working. Yeah? Not sitting down. Learning, working, and doing what you want as a goal. You have a goal, then you go for that goal. Mm. So for me, telling people what, whatever we have is not enough, it's enough. You just have to have that time and the creative mind. Let me ask you, we see a whole matatu, these large ones especially, which have been, you, you, you've, you've poured your art all over it. How long does it take to conceptualize when, for a whole matatu? Because it's, I think it's, it's, in my view, I am not an, an artist of that kind, it's easier to have if you am drawing the microphone behind Noel, than to have for a whole matatu. How, how, how long does it take? Okay, um, I, it may seem easy, the way I'll say it, but for me, me especially me, I don't draw it down on paper. I just get the theme. I work on themes. Let, let's say if it's a musical thing or a graffiti thing, I just get the theme, set up my things like I look for fonts, portraits. Then, after doing that, when I start, it can even take me like two days doing the whole thing. Because I start from this end, go, front, side, rear. Done. Two days for the big matatu? Yeah. Hey, yeah 20 years in the but, Let me tell you, it's, <laughs> it's like this. Provided they don't have like many cars, normally I have many cars, so I have to do, maybe I can touch this car, this side, today. The other one I do the pro portrait, the other one I do something like a pattern. But if I'm with one car, like a Nissan, a 14 I can do it in one day. Not even one day, hours. Because a, a whole portrait, the rear portrait, I, I take like two hours with the airbrush. I do the sketch first, then the, do, because the sketch is the most difficult thing. It takes me like 30, 20 minutes. Now the airbrush takes me like one and a half hours because of the uh, tone, color tones and all that. Then the graffiti and the logos and all that, that's simple. I wish I would say that myself. <laughs> Nadia, for you, um, for, first of all, for those who may not understand exactly what an animator does, maybe just explain that to us and tell us how long, the same because I've asked him, how long does it take for you to do like a whole project ordinarily? Um, an animator um, is I'd say like they work with illusions. So they make you believe that something is alive or they make you believe that something can move when it's really a series of still things. So for me, I'm a, I'm a draftsman, I'm a 
I draw, and that's how I animate. There's people who animate by moving puppets, there's people who animate using 3D software, but drawing is what I love, and that's the medium that I choose to work with. Um, it takes a very long time. Um, to many people, it wouldn't make sense. Like, to get um, somebody walking or to get six seconds can take you weeks to understand, because uh, so you have to understand. Six seconds of someone walking can yeah, take you weeks to can draw. can take you weeks, or it, depending on how are they walking, where are they going to, are they in a hurry? Um, with their clothes, is there like, um, are their clothes blowing in the wind? Like there's so many things to consider in your scene. Um, because I found, I thought um, animation, as much as it's about making things move, it's also about making you believe something is alive. So in order for you to believe something is alive, who is the character? Um, why do they do things? So um, if you take like Roadrunner and a Coyote, for example, he always wants to get the Roadrunner. That's what he wants to do. So every single thing he does in that box when you're watching him is about getting him. So even the animators, when they're working on it, that intention is clear in all of their minds as a team. So understanding a character in full, designing how they look, designing their intentions, takes time, um, it takes a lot of practice, mm. like you were saying. So in order for him to do it in two hours, I'm sure that's like now taking 20 years for you to get that sharp. So even as I'll demonstrate yeah. in a bit, doing like a quick caricature of you in like five minutes, I've drawn thousands of faces. So it's taken me years, because I first um, started working um, in animation and comics in 2009. So okay, and time. in light of how much work it is, do you feel that you know, people appreciate it as much, or do people take it for granted? Because I'll come and put cartoons because I want the children to watch. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, do you feel that it's appreciated or people are really generally ignorant about it? And appreciation also goes to payment. Mm. Yeah, that's, it's still a journey. Um, <laughs> I don't think people, yeah, they don't appreciate how long it takes. Because it's for entertainment and it looks light, it makes your kids laugh, it makes you laugh. Because there's levity in it, you assume the work is light, but it's actually very labor intensive. Um, so my hope is that as the practice grows in Kenya, which it is, there's lots of amazing studios around the city who are growing, doing fantastic work. Um, the more I think we tell the story of our process, people will respect it as a craft and then pay us our dues. Okay, so people don't really appreciate the process mm -hmm. and it happens to many Many, many people, you know, you've, you've, you've had sleepless nights <laughs> preparing for a project, your biggest project, yeah. and someone thinks, are you too? Mm. <laughs> like me, sometimes I stay overnight doing something because maybe the owner wants it by tomorrow. But he thinks it's like, imebaki said moja. See what Maliza. Yeah, but he doesn't know what it takes. Fumes, paint, maybe you're doing the paint, someone knocks the paint down. You see, you have to go buy another paint, do the same artwork. Maybe sometimes, like for me, because some, most of the time people call me, I'm on the phone, customer comes, I may be writing a name, yeah? I start with V, uh, let's, let's say like vicious, I start with V, then I go to the office, uh, deal with my customer, I come back, then do the same V again. It's like you have two Vs, then my boys are like, boss, two Vs. So you have to redo it. So those customers won't see <laughs> what you are doing because sometimes we stay up late, we, a lot of manpower, eh, the expense is too much. Sometimes people, you don't even take lunch. Like for me, after, maybe after I wake up, go to the mosque, go to the gym, come back to work, I may eat in the evening. Mm. Because I don't have that time because I work, I have to deal with my customers, I have to deal with my students, I have to deal with the other jobs because I don't have one car, maybe like 15, 20 cars at the same time. So someone will just see, Moha, ni Malizian toke. They, they don't, they don't appreciate the Yeah, process. they don't appreciate. Some do appreciate. Some do really appreciate. They thank you. They tell you, take your time. I love your job. Do this. But some, they just come because they know you, you are good at it. So they think it, will, it is just like magic. Pop. Some other customers bring their car like, uh, it's like, boss, it will take a week. It's like, one week, only this. Sometimes I tell them, you come, sit here for one day, or even one hour, Just you see what I go through. So after they, they do that, after that they're like, are you done? 
not yet okay so <laughs> they at least get to appreciate it yes and the same thing for you noel for sure i think um and even as you begin nadi could actually just begin because i know you've said you can drain how long Five no, minutes? No question. That means we are, we are taking a break in not too long. So by the time the break is happening, she should have been through. <laughs> as, 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 Noel, as Noel tells uh, us about, you know, people appreciating his process. No, I think Nadia put it well when, when she said that people don't appreciate the process because we don't break it down as creative sometimes. And I've gotten requests where someone would tell me, hey, can you play this gig? How much are you going to charge? I give them the charge and they say, I, but see, you guys are just having fun. So you're just singing. But they don't see that even to make it look like I'm just singing and having fun is a lot of work. Um, the practice and you know booking rehearsal spaces and buying my equipment, uh, buying this guitar, maintaining it, uh, buying guitar amps, all that involves resource, involves time, involves effort. And I think as creatives, we really need to start showing what uh, the back end of what we do because it looks like a very easy job. And at some point, I'd even started a vlog. I was trying to, because people used to ask me, what does a musician do the whole day? They're just sitting <laughs> in the house. So the I queen, was, yeah, I was trying to, you know, put up a vlog, a, a vlog of my whole day just to show you that there's a lot of process. Before you hear that one song, before you see that one performance, uh, it's been a lot of work. But what was the challenge of the vlog? Because I know a number of artists, a number of creators, a number of even businesses are really relying on growing their brand right. by, you know, by tapping into that online space. Mm. But what are some of the challenges you found with a, with a vlog? Uh, well, for me, I think it was, it's, I didn't realize how time consuming it is to edit because I had to learn how to edit um, and I was cutting up my own footage. And then sometimes I forget, like I would, I would come, my day is so intensive, I, I come here for this interview, I go somewhere else and I forget to, re I forget to record because there's no one else with me. So I forgot to put the camera. But it was very time consuming because I had to sit down every night and cut up the footage of the day, which, and then I'm making it into five minutes and maybe it's footage for 20 minutes. Now I became an editor, <laughs> I'm a musician. <laughs> so I think that was the only challenge, like it was, I was doing work that I felt was not priority. On so your, 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 your uploads would be about five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah it would be a short And block. so what was the kind of a, you know, number of hits? Because you find not many people may have access to watch a whole five minute video on bundles. True, true, true. You true. know, some people may be privileged enough to have, as, uh, to have a lot of bundles to actually watch yeah. that. Or they're just your diehard fans. Exactly, exactly. Or others may have access to Wi-Fi. So how was that for exactly. you? Exactly. I think for me, this is how I look at the social media sphere. Um, there are different levels of engagement for every fan. There's your passive fan, there's your active fan, there's your street team fan, and there are fans like your mother who will walk up to you and say, you know my son, no, even if she I know you. <laughs> uh, that's the ultimate level. But the street team one would watch everything that you put out. So I feel like as a creative, if you're trying to invade the social media space, you need to create content for every level of engagement that your fans are at. So my vlog was for my diehard fans. But if you don't have time for that, I'd put up an official video to a single at some point, and the passive fan would watch that. Um, the active fan would go on my Instagram and see what I'm up to. So at every level, every fan has something to engage with. And I think that's what creative should embrace, because we are lucky now that we have direct access to, to our, our, our audiences. Audiences, OK. Mm -hmm. So far, Nadia is not doing too badly. Does that look like me? I hope it ends up looking like me. Yeah, it's coming through. <laughs> Nadia, what do you use? I use chalk pastels for, um, for caricatures because it allows me to cover a lot of ground really quickly. Yeah, so that's what I like. I like using them. Okay, and, and, and what are they made of? Is, is it just chalk, chalk, or is it, does it have a special? Um, they are chalk pastels. I think they are pressed a bit harder together, so they don't smudge it. So it's not like the one for the blackboard. Okay. So it's designed to stick to the paper. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Moha, you've talked about like paints, and maybe it's, I don't know whether it applies as well to Nadia, but in terms of what about your health, the health concern there, because when you're having all these <coughs> paints being sprayed, it's a, it's a, it's a health concern, and then you're coughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, normally, Anytime I have students or my workers, we normally put on masks because I have a godown where we do the painting inside, so it's real. But we have fans. But in health, for health, you have to use the mask. Without the mask, you'll really have some 
bad uh, infection for your throat because there was a time I never used to use masks. So after every two weeks, I'm getting throat infection, chest infection, and even I have asthma. So I normally carry my inhaler always with me when I do it. But Did you have asthma before this or was it developed along the way? No. I had it before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Paul. But on the other side, provided you take the uh, proper measures, it's okay, and you use the right kind of pain because there are some other pains with which are not that good. Substandard pains which can, even for me, I cannot uh, use them. Mm -hmm. So I use those quality pains which don't have those bad, uh, really bad fumes. Okay. Yeah. Now that you have the issue of health concerns in regards to the materials that you use? Uh, not necessarily, but there's other health issues that can come up when you're animating. So um, animators are prone to getting carpal tunnel syndrome because you're holding your pencil Which is? like this. It's, um, I think it's an ailment that affects your hand over here. Okay. And it comes from clenching like this for many hours a day. Okay. So we actually have to have a practice of always exercising your hands, stretching. Mm -hmm. And also if you sit at your desk hunched over for hours, it can also affect your shoulders. Mm. So you have to make a point to be active because your craft is so stationary. Okay. Gentlemen, now I'm coming to the thing about financing of your business. <clears throat> I mean, for you, it's a business. You know, many times we think yeah. of art, it's just a passion. Like, for <laughs> example, if it's a musician, yeah. it's a passion, it's, it's a talent, but you don't think of it so much as a business. How do you finance your business? Um, it's interesting you, you bring that up. I think for the longest time, I was uh, caught up in that very definition that you've given art as a passion. And a lot of times I neglected to monetize my, my talent. I, I think it's until when you get older and you start realizing the landlord doesn't understand uh, uh, that you're an artist. They understand <laughs> rent at the end of the month. It's when now you start taking steps to monetize your 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 skill. And I think what musicians suffer from is we have an ideal and then we have a realistic situation. So ideal is I'm on, st I'm on the biggest stage, I'm playing the biggest shows, you know, everyone loves my music and I want to get there and I'm working to get there. But the realistic one is maybe, maybe it's just your friends who care about your music currently. <laughs> so how do you get your friends to invest in your music first and tell everyone about what they've invested in. So working your way from the grassroots level, I think we hate that work because we believe, you know, and we're very entitled as well. We believe if I'm talented, doors are gonna open. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna get every everything that I and need. And because everyone around you has said you're the best artist, exactly. in your mind you're the best artist. So I'm like, I don't know why, and that guy is getting that gig and I sing better than him. Ah, <laughs> what? So I, I've had to break down the entitlement that my talent is, okay, it's significant, but it's, a small fraction to monetizing my talent. The second thing I had to do is kind of do the dirty work before mm. I go to the level where I'm getting gigs for myself. You know, I'd play for other musicians, I'd music direct shows, I'd do studio sessions, I'd teach music sometimes. I'd do anything around my musical gift to finance my ideal situation. And I think that's what we don't like to do. We just like to work with, this is what I want to do. I'm not doing anything else. And if this fails, ah, music is so hard in Kenya. Oh, there's no money. <laughs> Look for a white collar job. Yeah, you wear a suit exactly. like I am. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I wear a suit sometimes, but. Yeah, it, it works for you. And just before we get back to that, Nadia is through. She actually took about six minutes. I was, I was monitoring. Do you think that looks like me? Yeah, I can see your head. I, yeah. I, have, I have that kind of a forehead, the caricature <laughs> as in, I'm a very forward-thinking person. <laughs> <laughs> All those who think it's me say I. Yeah. yeah. All those who say nay, <laughs> the eyes have it. <laughs> Good job. And that's okay. about six minutes of that. Thanks. For you, you're in employment. No, I'm uh, independent. And entrepreneur. Yeah. So for you, your financing. Where do you get? Where how do you fund your business to make it sustainable? It's a good question. <laughs> it's a question I'm still finding the answer to. Um, I'm finding that, like doing caricature gigs, like at corporate events, um, helps, and also uh, doing commissions. So if somebody wants like uh, an image of like a, f a colleague who's leaving their office or of their girlfriend, I can do that as well. But I'm trying to find financing for a long-term project because, like I mentioned earlier, animation takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to find to understand how to fund. 
like that long-term project still. And like in, in your estimation, maybe in your research, what are the options that you have in terms of getting this kind of funding? Uh, grants, grants, foreign grants. Although what I'm also more curious about and what I'm actively looking into is into uh, local patrons. Because I believe that there is money in the city. I just have to find a way to like siphon it into my studio. <laughs> so it's a question I'm still answering. But uh, grants, grants are, and like foreign markets, like foreign investors, for now that's like the biggest way to finance a, a film or an animated film project. Okay. And, and locally, I mean, you know, if say you want to do a film project, you know, there's, there's opportunities for youth in business from the government funds. Have any of you tried to get into that, to get the government sponsored, uh, the, the, the finances from the government, from the funds, youth fund, name ah, it? Well, um, Moha, have you tried? I tried once, but too much complication. And I don't have that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Kitwina to fund this is just you work, whatever you get, you save up, buy equipments, do this, try and move on. But there was a time I never used to make money because whatever you do for someone is too much for what they have paid you. Sometimes you go down your pocket to finish a project, mm -hmm. but you have to make, you have to go to, uh, through that sacrifice to build your name for other people because whatever you're going to to do it has to be seen and p people to pay you well they have to see how good you are mm -hmm. and how good you are will de determine with how hard you have worked and after all that hard work sometimes it pays sometimes it's still not that good but uh, all i can say it's through those years at least now it's starting to pay mm -hmm. at least it's starting to pay because i'm getting jobs from corporate companies, mm -hmm. uh, small cars, private cars, matatus, because people have seen what I do, so they have the trust in me, because for a guy who has done his work for 20 years, I have the experience, and I still do it myself. I don't give people to do it. I have workers, but my workers, all of them have their duties, but the finished product, I have to do it myself, like the paint work, the graffiti, the portraits, and the finishing. I have that, to do it. Does that make it a bit tedious for you? I think I'm used to that. If I stay a whole day without uh, picking <laughs> a gun, I become sick. There was <laughs> a time we went to China. We went to China for some training, paint training. It's like we went through the training like for four days. Then like three days I was not working. Even my muscles started aching. I had to go <laughs> look for a gym in China so that I can be active. Even people at home, I cannot sit down like for 10 minutes. I think you have seen me, I'm restless. I, I don't like sitting down. It's like my garage is big. Now from my office to the workshop is like a distance. And people tell me the distance I walk is like going to Mombasa and coming back. <laughs> because I'm inside the workshop, do something, come out from the other door, go to the office, go to the kitchen, cook my eggs, then come back, go to the uh, workshop, do something, go outside look for someone, come back, it's like, the whole day is like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, not doing it, it feels like the Moha graphics, not Moha graphics anymore. Mm -hmm. I teach my guys how to do it, they help me, but at the end of the day, I have to do it myself. And that was my prayer since I was very young. I asked God to give me the talent and the power to work till the day I go down. I don't want to be, even if, yes, I'm the boss, but people come to the office, I'm not like this. This is just because of the studio. <laughs> when I go back to work, I put my dirty overall, my oversized shoes, then I go to work. People come, it's like, uh, Moha yuko <laughs> It's like, most of them, they come to me, Habari, Moha yuko? Nambia ya, go to the office, it's coming. <laughs> because they find me there, maybe uh, uh, doing the scrapping, maybe putting the tape, it's like, okay, sawa, wata tumgoje. Then you go, uh, you're Moha. They are shocked. Yeah. And that's what builds that okay. name. You have to work for it. For a, any artist, what I can always tell them, you want to get the best thing, you have to work for it. It does not come easy. Okay. Anything easy goes easy. Goes too. easy. Easy yeah. come, easy go. Yeah. Noel, pick your guitar. Okay. It's not a prop for studio. I thought, I thought, I thought it was. Uh, no, 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 no. So Noel is going to take us to the break. Um, right. What are you going to sing? 
<sighs> well, since you said it was a battle for LD and Nairobi, I'll, yeah. I'll sing a song about Nairobi. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. This one I wrote it, but I didn't call it Nairobi, I called it No Running. Because I think we have many problems in Nairobi, but we ju we're just like Situ Hamisteto. <laughs> but I think we're the salt and light, we, we have to change things here. Yeah. <laughs> Kenyan estate. <laughs> Kenyan estate. Yeah. Oh, well. I found this pretty lady. I have known her all my life. Her name is Nairobi. We call her the city. Shining bright under the sun. Isn't she lovely? A place of cool water. She satisfies And when you will find her You'll never run, you'll never hide So no running Hakuna kutoweka Nyumbani narejea Nairobi na kupenda No running Hakuna kutoweka Nubani na rejea, Nairobi na kupenda No bani No bani And this pretty lady She has seen me all my life Days of a young boy And like everybody Good job, man. <laughs> All right, we are on air on this side of the studio with our own rendition. We're keeping on going with the same thing. This could be a collaboration, but we begin first by speaking from the Nation Center. We know who sent us here is the person who made sure that we get the message out. So we don't <laughs> massage the truth, but speak it out. So, Noel, we'll finish our collabo in a bit. We'll finish our collabo in a bit. <laughs> we'll do our collabo. So we want to do our last round of, of, of questions as we go ahead with the conversation. Nadia, someone has said you've, you know, my forehead. I, th I feel like because my stage name is number eight, it could be an eight head. <laughs> I'm not sure how. But, you know, I, and I realize you've given me a very strong side eye game. Uh, I can see, like, I was looking at him. Yeah, it was only you were looking at him. I hope you didn't no. feel offended or look at like that. <laughs> Maybe it was just like my arm. No, generally, as a general question to you guys, do you feel like has been asked in the other counties, the government is doing enough to empower artists, or is it, I mean, do you feel that even with all the promises, the actual support still feels far? Oh. I'll begin with you, Nadia. Oh, no, let's, this guy has actually decided. Let me just yeah, get him yeah. this moment. <laughs> he has something he has to share. He might write a book. I, I, feel, I feel like... Um, the, the intent and their corporations that are supposed to be supporting artists, but there's just too much of uh, negligence and corruption. Yeah, um, you know, the other day I was joking on Facebook, I wrote, uh, I'm, I'm signed up to one of the CMOs and one of the royalty distributors, and I wrote, hey, just got sent 2,000 shillings, drinks on who, you know? <laughs> and now, it's a joke, but seriously, you know, for the work that I've put out in the last year, you want to tell me that I earned only 2,000 shillings from royalties? Well, someone earned 500 and they are saying, no, it is being proud right now, but <laughs> I think the structures are lacking. So, yeah. so is, it, is it that you doubt the credibility of that system, or is it that maybe, like you said earlier, your music is popular with 10 people, for instance? Right. Could it be that? Right. Well, um, you know, across the board, even there was a list maybe a couple of weeks back that was released and I think the top song had earned 10,000 shillings. The top song, it's like this 11 is, actually. This, yeah. is, this is like heavy radio rotation song. You can't tell me it earned 10,000 shillings. So there's, there's something, maybe I, I don't have all the facts, but I don't know, there's, there's a general lack of accountability when it comes to government institutions or institutions that are supposed to be cre uh, helping creatives. There's, a, there's like a general lack of accountability. It's a conversation you can actually have forward 
we'll probably plan for another show. We'll have the government officials yeah, in here. Yeah, I'd like to hear their part. You and know, and their side. I, will you be willing to talk to them straight up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't be afraid. No artists are not to be bold people. Eh? True. We are <laughs> timid. <laughs> Nadia, do you think enough is being done? Um, not yet, but I think things are looking up. Like I think with policies and the structures that are there, that they are growing and they are changing. So for me personally, as an animator, as a filmmaker, um, access to, I think training is the biggest question. So I think the state uh, needs to um, be more deliberate about encouraging people to pursue uh, creative visual arts as a viable, uh, as a viable career choice from when you're like in kindergarten, because that's when it starts. So it can't be uh, not just when you finish uh, KCSC. It's like, oh, which art university should I go to? I've been fortunate enough to have been cultivated from the very beginning, like from when I was three. So I think if the structures were more uh, deliberate from the foundation for nurturing artists and creative thinkers, uh, that would be great. Um, but I think there are strides that we are taking. So I would, I'll say not enough is being done, but I think we're on our way moving forward. Moha. Same question. Do you feel, especially for you now, who's been there for a longer time than the rest of the panelists, do you feel that enough is being done? And how would you compare by the time you started and now? The time I started, it was a bit okay. Government will quite sumbu isana. Because now, government is not sumbua. Aji. Kwanza, most of the time, about maybe the graffiti we do. Okay, for me, let's say if you cover the rear, the rear screen, the new cars, sometimes they say they are unroadworthy. I think you've heard about that. But here the government was not giving us enough help. Because like for me, I'm really empowered. In my garage, I only have young people. I'm empowering young guys, very young guys from the age of 20 to 30. So sometimes there was a time I wanted to get this uh, youth fund so that I can buy uh, learning equipment like boards and all that for my students. But I was really taken all this, and then I even stopped about it. So the government should look for these things like art. Art is what is making the, the country colorful, first thing. Like for my kind of art, the graffiti art, people come from different countries to come and see what I do. Because like now, Pullman Safaris have, they, start, they put a package for their visitors who come from uh, America, London, they, it's like a package coming to Moha to see how this matatu thing is done. And they are taken for a ride with a matatu. So the government should see even this thing is a, like a tourist attraction because like even now I have a cameraman, there is a, a video, something, some, some guy from USA, he's doing some uh, videos ab about what I do, the matatus and everything, and people there, they really like it because it's like a culture in Kenya. Mm. So Kenya, they should see this thing as something very good and should try and nurture everyone who can do this thing and help them, you see. Okay, and in the, in just a very quick um, comment from each of you. What's your closing comment in regards to the whole creative economy? <coughs> what do you feel should be the way forward? Real quickly so we can wrap up. Okay. I'll begin with the lady. Yeah. Okay, um, I think training, time, uh, and money those are the things that we need in order to be like big players. Because uh, as an animator, I've seen other industries in other countries where the work is farmed out to countries like uh, South Korea or India to uh, produce American properties because the labor is cheaper there. But what I'd really love as an animator in Kenya is if we have our own properties, we have our own style, our own visual language, and our own like distinct high quality output and that will take a lot of time people taking it seriously yeah money okay and even may just ask for the sake of when someone may have seen your work either here uh, the eight head there mm -hmm. <laughs> which is good for caricature mm -hmm. um or, or otherwise what are the rates that you work with so you said again your rates in terms oh, of your rates. charges ah, okay so i have an hourly rate or uh, an hourly rate a day rate or uh a, a half day rate and it also all depends I wouldn't say it here just because it all depends on like the number of people at your event um, what it is that you're expecting color black and white are they children like there's many variables okay yeah. Moha quickly what you think sh uh, needs to be done 
and what your rates are? Okay, for me, the uh, only thing I can say, what should be done, we should be given chance to do what we do best, and the government should let us do what we do best and give us the chance to proceed higher. Yeah. Okay, and even as, as you tell us your rate, can you tell us about your teeth? <laughs> there are, they look like a work of art themselves. <laughs> okay, like for me, I like being unique. Uh, before, I had one teeth. Moja tu, yani moja tu. Yeah, silver. Yeah, silver. Yeah. So, but I used to wear like a lot of chains and all that. So I thought instead of doing that, because I used to lose them a lot. So I decided instead of putting them on the table and all that, on the chain, let me just put them on, in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And it makes me unique because sometimes I go to a supermarket or a shop, I want to buy something. The guy is like, you want this? He's like on, looking at me, he's like, you want this? Huh? <laughs> so it gives me that uh, different look from everyone because I like being different. Well, Even my art, no, it's permanent. Permanent, eh? Yeah, I've had them for 10 years now. <coughs> Wow, that must yeah. be real silver. Hope it, it's, it's not silver. fake metal ah, that starts <laughs> corroding in your mouth. What are your rates real quickly? Okay, my rates depends okay. on the condition of the car, the kind of graffiti, the kind of paint, and the time I'm going to use on that car. Noel? Yeah, for me, I... In one minute, then you take, as you pick your guitar. Yeah, I'll speak to both the creatives and the consumers. Creatives, I think we should learn how to give the backstory of our, of our journey and we need to take what we think we deserve because no one owes us anything. And then to the consumers, I don't think uh, if, you, if you eliminated all art from your day, your day would suck. Mm. Like if there's no books you'd read, no visuals that you'd see, no music you'd hear, you would be dead. So art has a place in this society and we just need to step up and show people that it is important. Yeah, and uh, my rates, you can slide into my DM. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Notice how none of these creatives want to say their rate, but yeah. it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. No, uh, I mean... Moha, are you going to sing with us? <coughs> so do you want me to play the Papa Wimba thing? No, play, play something, something else. Psychological. Moha, plays, uh, sing psychologically. Yes. I'll, I'll even start. <laughs> As we wrap up the show. <coughs> it's the Dan number eight. Yo, guys up, girls up, guns up, guns up, tidies up, time is up, tidy up, turn it up, talk the talk, walk the walk, walk the talk, talk the walk, know the boss, no more loss, floss across, that's the force, this is nice, Jesus Christ, pay the price, we are the brides, slow it down, hold it down, holy grounds, what we need, holy grounds, what we need, yes indeed, what he did, he got beat, had to bleed, now we're freed indeed, let's be real with the king, Elohim, all for him, only him, give it up, leave it up, be transformed, informed, reformed, Internal, external, it's a rap, like what I just did. It's a rap for us on NTV today. 